Stephen Moffat. Stephen Moffat. What have you done? My Doctor Who DVD collection. It's Captain Jack Harkness, the face of both. So yes, the finale has aired. The finale is finished. The series is finished. Series 10 of Doctor Who has ended. And this is my last review of the series and the second to last time I'm using that intro so yeah say goodbye to that intro now so yes the finale for Doctor Falls my initial thoughts on this episode was that it was going to be another disappointing Moffat finale but I have to say I quite enjoyed this finale apart from Bill's departure and yet I was just hitting myself all the way through this episode as Stephen Moffat failed once again not to kill off a character. It's okay killing off a character, I would rather the character survive, like Nardal did in this episode. That's how a companion should depart. But once a character dies, they are dead. Y little kids who watch Doctor Who will think that death isn't an actual thing, you'll come back to life. That's what they'll think if they're like four years old and stuff like that. They'll just think when someone dies, they'll come back to life. So yeah, it's not setting a good example, Stephen Moffat. So yes, the Doctor Falls. How would I rate this episode out of 10? Well, I would say this episode gets an 8 out of 10. Being one of my favourites of the series. Not so far anymore of the whole series now. So yes, it is behind World Enough in Time, The Pilot and Empress of Mars. Then it's on par with The Lie of the Land and just above the Eaters of Light. So yes, it's quite a good episode in my opinion, a very good episode of the series. So yes, for Doctor Falls, it was an eventful episode. Everything happened in this episode, as well as having Cybermen and the genesis of the Cybermen with the Mondasium, the 2006 ones and the 2013 ones. This finale had some explosions. It had two companions departures. It had the heavy creatures return from the pilot, Missy's death. Now, is the master dead? That's a crucial question. The master actually killed himself. The master committed suicide, but survived in a way. Yeah, that, that sounds so, you killed yourself, but you didn't kill yourself. You still survived after killing yourself. That, that That's something Stephen Moffat wanted to do all along, I reckon. So yeah, Missy is dead. John Sim went off to regenerate, really disappointed that we didn't see much of John Sim, as I did think he was very underused in this episode. He was the most anticipated thing of this series, I was really looking forward to his return. Then he wasn't in this episode much, and yes, we didn't see the regeneration between John Sim's master to Missy, which was disappointing. We saw his death with him getting stabbed by Missy, which I reckon will get some complaints by some parents who have younger viewers, really young viewers, that blood's being used. But you know, it's only a bit of blood. Anyone can bleed. So yeah, you know, it wasn't exactly a brutal stabbing. It wasn't like Game of Thrones when someone gets beheaded. It was just a stab. And yeah, get over it. And that knife wasn't that big. I don't think the master would have died from the knife stabbing so quickly. And yes, the doctors, the 12th doctor's death, was in this story after he got electrocuted by a Cyberman and yeah he kept on regenerating throughout the story then he managed to pull it off so yes he is regenerating he's been regenerating since he was on the rooftop which was in fact the rooftop which was used in the return of Doctor Mysterio if you noticed that I personally did and yeah that was a good throwback there was a lot of throwbacks to the sound of drums and the other Cybermen stories at the end when the Doctor was destroying all the Cybermen and blowing up all those mines he was saying what planets the Cybermen have conquered he mentioned Telos, Mondas, he mentioned Mari Marinus which was used in the Keys of Marinus and yeah loads of different planets he said you once conquered the moon great throwback to the moon base and yeah some good references to the sound of drums and yeah a really good finale in my opinion. Did get a bit boring in some points I would have to say as it wasn't as explosive 
explosive sorry as I anticipated I thought this was going to be an explosive finale but in fact the only explosions we really saw were the ones which we saw on the next time trailer and yes I loved the Iden at the beginning of this episode if you were watching on BBC One in the UK it was awesome so yes the presenter who does it said welcome to the series 10 finale then a Cyberman interrupted and said you will be upgraded. That's a really bad time man impression. But then introduced the show. That was so cool. And yeah, at the beginning, I had a bit of a technical issue as I had um, accidentally had the audio on. So it was saying what was happening. And yeah, that was really annoying. Managed to turn it off. But it was a bit of a disappointment for me that I didn't check beforehand to turn off that setting. So yeah, this episode, I would personally say it was the best Moffat finale. Apart from, Bill didn't get killed off. Nardal, he had a good departure in this story, just defending a new colony, really, and defending the people from future Cybermen invasions. Yeah, that was a really good departure for Nardal. Probably the best of the modern era, as it has just been simple, really. Bill's departure. What do I have to say about Bill's departure? So, yeah, Bill got converted to a Cyberman, and yes... When I first saw her in that barn lying down, I was like, Stephen Moffat, I am coming to get you. Why have you unconverted her? But it turned out that it was what she was seeing as she was clinging on. And it linked him with the monk three-parter. As in the monk three-parter, she managed to hold her memories just like she was doing in the Cybermen. She was resistant. She was immune to not being under control by these telepathic aliens so yeah that was a really good continuity thing which linked in with that story as the monk story it was a bit pointless i think but it's not pointless anymore as it made a good reference in this story some really good references in this story the mondasian cybermen i think they were just there for fan service really they didn't really apply to the plot that well just as i predicted that the cybermen evolved over time as it was running faster that's why all three incarnations were there apart from the other ones from the 80s but no one really likes it those that much but you know i like them so yeah i did think that was a bit underused the mondesian cybermen a bit disappointing about that the explosions in this were brilliant absolutely brilliant and yeah i forgot to mention bill's departure so yeah she got Converted to a Cyberman, and then she got unconverted from a Cyberman, kind of, as the heavy creature from the pilot did kind of rescue her mind and created a new water form body for her. Then it was revealed that all the cells could get rearranged and she could go back and live on Earth. So, yes, she is not dead. And yeah, similar concept to Hellbent of, you know, traveling around the universe, going to see the stars, very similar departure for both of Stephen Moffat's last two finales, two companions. So yeah, bit of a copy, bit of a copy to Genesis of the Cybermen in a way, as the Doctor did defeat them, but only temporarily. And yeah, really did like the throwbacks to the companions at the end, when there was flashbacks to the companions. That was really good. Wish they could fit some more classic companions in there. They had Sarah Jane, but she appeared in the modern era as well. I wish they had got some past thingies, past companions to come back and like say Doctor, that would be really good. Really like those little cameos in this episode, really, really good they were. But you know, with timing issues and that, with it only having to be a limited amount of time, they couldn't put all the companions in. So yeah, this episode, really good. And yeah, that cliffhanger was quite good as well, that cliffhanger with David Bradley returning as the first Doctor. The rumours are true some people were saying i was lying when i did that video about a month ago but in fact it was real so yeah really proud really excited about david bradley is coming back as the first doctor as you know it's the first doctor and william panel's dead so you know i reckon that's going to get some complaints as well for resurrecting a dead actor in that way just like in rogue one when they resurrected peter cushing so yeah hopefully that won't happen as I think William Hartnell would have wanted it, and I think he will be proud anyway that Doctor Who's continued so long. So yes, until the next time, goodbye!